Ready? So hey guys, this is my weekly report. It was supposed to be February 2nd, but I'm a day late. But anyhow, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. You know, I've been in the fishing industry for over 30 years. And when I do these reports, I get information from guides, um, friends, customers, you know, and I'm on the water now lately, maybe two times a week because of the weather we're having. But all the information I gather is pretty current. And um, Saturday, if you're on your way out, you know, I get here again. I'm on California Sportman every week at 640 on 1140 AM dial on um, Seth's show. And then like on the first week of Saturday, I'm actually in the studio. So, you know what, let's get on with this report. So there's not a whole lot going on because of this crazy weather we're having. It's actually beautiful, but it's really cold. You know, at nights it's always in the mid thirties and sometimes it's gotten down to like 33. And the water temperatures in all the reservoirs and everything and even the rivers are, the water is really cold and it's been a little tough. Uh, the Delta, we haven't had much rain lately, but when we got it, we got a whole bunch of it. And I was down um, over at Steamboat Slough on Wednesday and the water, I could probably see maybe two inches down. It was still very cloudy very chocolatey so I think the fishing you know in there I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I go look around again I went to the port um, the water they've been catching a lot of fish in there the water's pretty decent where you can see down you know about maybe a little over a foot to two feet and you know there's a lot of stripers in there so if you have access to the port that's probably one of the places I would head to so some of the things going on other, you know, I always start in salt and um, the crabbing is really good. You know, when you could get out there, the, it's been, I know it's good because the commercial guys are out there and, you know, you can use regular pots now, but you have to make sure you have that crab validation stamp. But the commercial guys are out there and they must be catching a whole lot of crabs because you know, in the, I was in the Chinese market the other day and they were selling live Dungeness crab for $3.99 a pound. Now, by the time I fill my truck up, my boat, and leave real early in the morning, and the only thing you can do right now is go get crabs or, you know, those sole, those little flat fish. That's all you can do out there. So mainly we were out there and grabbed the crab. But after I start adding things up, it's actually cheaper to go to the store and get the live crab versus putting all the gas and time and going and getting your own. So, you know, if you want, check it out, 399 pound. But anyhow, coming inside, you know, there's not much else going out there until rock season opens and make sure you read the rules because, you know, I hear that, you know, they're gonna start at 300 feet or deeper. So it's making fishing a little bit different, but it's actually grounds that haven't been fished in 10 years. So the rock fishing should be off the hook when the season comes. Other things um, in the bay, I haven't heard much going on. You know, there's guys picking up some stripers here and there. Um, but overall, it's been, uh, everybody's kind of like laid back and not reporting much because they're not going out, especially the guides. Um, sturgeon fishing is starting to get really good. You know, we've got perfect water conditions. I know a lot of guys are out there um, starting their um, sturgeon fishing right now in Pittsburgh, Martinez area. But I know guys in the river, in the Sacramento River, around Hood, um, Merritt Landing, you know, that boat ramp right below Clarksburg. They've been picking up some nice fish. And there's also um, rumors that they're catching them about that nice landing already. I think because we had this so much water come down and it's muddy like that, those sturgeon love it. It's perfect conditions for them. So they make their way up and usually if they get past Sacramento, you're going to be catching like a lot of oversized fish because those are your prime spawning fish. The ones that go up night's landing, you know, you can get a few that are keepers, but most likely they're going to be oversized. So be careful how you handle them and release them so they can do their thing and spawn. 
Other things going around here, um, like I said, stripers in the port, other than that, forget it. It's been really, really tough out there fishing because of the water so muddy and murky. Um, other things going around, the trout fishing on the bigger lakes have been really good. So if you take a small lake like Amador, Collins, where they're not very big in acreage, so when that water comes in really hard like that, those lakes get muddied up and the fishing gets a little bit tough. Where the bigger lakes, Bullards, Comanche, and you know, uh, Berryessa, the lakes are bigger, so they don't get muddy, they stay clear. So a lot of the lakes are being planted pretty heavily, especially Comanche, and they're planting you know, fish from anywhere from pound and a half up to like 12, 13 pounds. A lot of uh, nice fish being caught out of Comanche. And probably, um, Tro Rapala's on top line, you know, because the water temperature is still like 49 degrees, 49 to 52. So you want to fish the surface. You want to fish anywhere from a foot down to 10 feet of water. So a lot of guys are top lining. If you use speedy shiners, you want to go about 2.5 miles an hour. If you want Tro Rapala's, I would look at the 7s or the size F7 or F9s. And those you throw down to about 1.5. But the fishing there has been pretty decent. I heard up the river it's a little murky, but if you go out by Hat Island, the water's pretty clear. Um, I know that um, Buller's Bar, like if you guys want to go do some kokanee fishing, they're catching a lot, a ton of kokanee up there. And it's early, but you know, they're catching a lot of them. And you know, they're, there's reports of fishing at 10 to 12 inch. And pull your regular stuff, Dodger, you know, with a pink hoochie behind it. And, you know, on your leader, you want it about one and a half length times the length of your Dodger. So if your Dodger is a five inch Dodger, then you probably want your leader about eight inches. Keep it short. It'll kick the lure around, the hoochie around a lot more, and you'll catch a lot of fish. Make sure you tip it with uh, corn. Other things going around. Um... There's really not a whole lot. I went up to Berryessa and I was looking around because I thought the lake might have turned, came up 20 feet. I went for salmon, I looked around, and immediately when I first started grafting, I could see all the bait and the fish in that 60 to 80 feet. So I know it didn't turn. Um, I didn't get bit, it was tough fishing. So I went bass fishing for a little while and we only caught four of them. So it was a little bit tough for me. I couldn't get on the main lake. It was really windy that day with a north wind, so I stayed off the main body. But overall, it, it seems like the last two or three weeks, it's been kind of the same thing, you know, not a whole lot happening. I anticipate, you know, it's supposed to get a little bit more rain this weekend. And um, hopefully that after this little bit more rain comes, we get sunny days in the the nighttime temperatures have to get in the 40s, not in the 30s like we are now. It needs to get in the 45 degree range of 47. And then in the daytime, maybe getting up in the high 60s and maybe even touching some 70s. And then after about a week, then I think, you know, all heck's going to break loose. And, you know, we can go stripers, you can go bass, you can do a lot of things. But I think this year with all the rain we had, I think fishing is going to be pretty dang good. Getting back to um, one of the things I want to tell you guys is, you know, we just had the ISC show in Sacramento. It ran Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I did seminars two times in the theater for SEPs. And then I was on the tank for Kent. So I illustrated my lures that I use for big stripers. Um, I talked about it two days in the theater and then I also went on the tank and demonstrated and showed my lures. So we decided to video it and the people that couldn't make it or couldn't stay long enough to watch any of my, sh my demonstrations, that we would video it. So I videoed it and we're going to show it um, this coming Monday and the following coming Monday. So basically I'm going to show you everywhere from what kind of rods reels gear ratios i talk about all the little tricks i do to my lures um, how i make them suspend you know whether i put a split ring on the front i don't use any kind of clips but i went over everything basically showing you how i catch all these big fish 
And the, most of the time I'm in like one to three feet of water. I'm real shallow and I use these baits. Um, if you didn't go to the show, they have all these live bass in this tank and you just see them. They just sit there nonchalantly, not hardly moving. Well, I demonstrate my lures and throw them in there and I hardly move them, make them just like they're cruising around, just like the fish in the tank. And that's what these big fish do. They ambush it. So stay tuned and watch the next, this coming Monday and the Monday after. And um, you can see what I did in, on my demonstrations. And it's actually probably better to see it on video rather than live because then you can rewind it if you miss something and check it out and see what I'm doing. So I hope you um, like my video. Please hit the like and subscribe because it's always going to help me um, move along in this YouTube adventure. And you can leave me a comment and I'll get back to you within two or three days. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.